Hello YouTube, my name is Zach. Thank you for stopping by my channel. This quick video, well, relatively quick compared to my other ones, is designed to kind of give any of the newcomers to this channel sort of an idea of what I'm all about. And if you have any questions about kind of my philosophies behind what I do as a voice teacher, well, hopefully this will answer some of the questions. These are some of the most frequently asked questions I get about what I do as a teacher and about why I'm here. So first off, who am I and why should you care? Well, my name is Zach Ansley. I am a professional voice teacher. I work at a music studio in Atlanta. I studied a Bachelor of Arts in uh, Vocal Performance at Augusta State University under the tutelage of Dr. J. William Hobbins, a wonderful voice teacher. Uh, I have a background in bel canto vocal pedagogy and vocal health. Those are my biggest emphases of vocal study. So what makes me different from all the other voice teachers out there on YouTube? That's an excellent question. And I would like to say for myself that what differentiates me is that I don't really concern myself with the way that people perceive my perspectives. Um, I'm always going to give an objective, unbiased opinion or thought or observation, regardless of if it makes someone upset that their favorite singer doesn't have perfect technique or whatever. Um, I also focus all of my analyses upon vocal health. Everything that I say and do, I'm going to be referring to things that you can do in a healthy way or methods that someone may use that are unhealthy for them. So that's my entire MO as a voice teacher is vocal health. So that leads to the question, why do I care so much about vocal health? I care about vocal health because as a voice teacher, and if you were my student, for example, I wouldn't just want you to go up and knock out a great performance as a singer. I would want you to be able to consistently knock out performances as a great singer for the next 20 years. If I turned you into a flash in the pan singer to where you could do a couple of good performances or even go on a tour and then you had to go on vocal rest for six months because your voice was ground into dust, then I didn't do my job very well because I didn't teach you very sustainable techniques. If I lead my students into techniques that cause vocal injuries, well, I feel like I'm personally responsible for that, as should most voice teachers. And uh, I believe that one of the most overlooked elements of voice teaching in modern society, period, is the concept that vocal health matters, and it absolutely does. So that's where I come from. Uh, what kind of background did I get my vocal training in? Well, I studied classical singing, opera, bel canto singing. I performed in everything from operas to musical theater programs, and I've done rock cover shows, and I've, I've uh, sung jazz, uh, but predominantly most of my singing has been from a classical background outside of things that I do on my own for fun. That's what my training is, is in, is in bel canto. So for the next question, I like rock music. Yeah, you teach classical music. What gives? How do they cross over? Well, the answer to that question is that I, when I teach, I teach vocal fundamentals. And by vocal fundamentals, I mean things that can be applied to any genre. It doesn't matter what genre of singing you're doing. If you don't have good breath support, then you're not going to do a very good job of singing that genre. I'm going to teach you how to be able to make sure you're on proper pitches. And if you can't match pitch, then it doesn't matter what genre you're singing. Uh, teaching someone to sing legato can be applied to basically anything. There are lots and lots of basic fundamental singing principles that can be taken with you anywhere. And my job and my goal as a voice teacher is to instill those fundamental values into you so, so that they are muscle memory and so that that's what you always defer to. And in that sense, when you go out and branch out and do your own thing, you'll at least have a good healthy baseline of singing to go back to whenever you need it. Do you teach harsh vocals? No. And the reason I do not teach harsh vocals is that despite... Lots of people claiming to the contrary and lots of people trying to, you know, say they have the next great insight on harsh vocals and how to do it healthfully and sustainably. There have been no longitudinal studies done on the subject in an academic setting. No case studies have been done on the long-term effects of harsh vocals. The, the trend of singing and vocalizing in that way has not even been around for longer than, you know, at the most 30 years, maybe 35 years. So as a result... I feel like it would be academically irresponsible of me to attempt to teach or display or encourage a form of singing that hasn't been 
approved in some kind of sustainable way. If as a voice teacher, I'm partially responsible for your vocal health, if I teach something that I cannot validate as being healthy, then I'm not doing a very good job. And I do believe that most voice teachers who take the approach of sing how you want, don't worry about the health, or it's okay to sound however you want to sound, regardless of the long-term implications, I believe that they're irresponsible and I refuse to be that way. Next question. It's not really a question. It's more like a statement. Your videos are too long. They're intimidating. Yes, I know my videos are long form. There is a reason for this. My videos are long form because I feel as though it is the best way for me to make sure that the viewer gets the full knowledge of what I have to offer in each video. I look for what I call teachable moments in each of the videos that I that I watch. And I don't do reaction videos, even though they may look like they're in like a reaction video format. I've actually already studied the singing clip before I make the videos, and I just wait for those, you know, teachable moments to happen. Now I will sometimes see things that I didn't catch on my first time through studying the, the singing clips, but for the most part, I want to be able to break down a singer in their entirety, look at their good habits, look at their bad habits, and be able to give you demonstrations and examples of both. I know that they're intimidating, but I keep them long because I want I want, each, I want each video to be more like a lesson, and I want the viewers to walk away feeling like they conclusively, definitively learn something. I certainly don't want to just flaunt my knowledge and then disappear. Ten minutes of me talking jargon and then go away. That wouldn't do anyone any good. My videos are catered typically toward people who already are singers, but that doesn't mean that you can't enjoy it if you aren't already a singer. I've had lots of people tell me that even though they don't know anything about singing, they like the content. They like learning about the subject. So I welcome you to, to join in and please feel free to ask me any questions in the comments or in my Discord server. There are all sorts of ways to get in contact or in touch with me if you don't understand something. Next question, why don't you demonstrate more when you make your videos? The main reason that I don't demonstrate much, I do sometimes, the main reason that I don't demonstrate much when I make my videos is I believe that imitation with singing is one of the worst things that you can do. The reason being that everyone's voice is distinctly different and everyone has a different configuration physically. So as a result, the sounds that my voice creates are not going to be the same as the sounds someone else's voices create naturally by, you know, with no manipulation. And if you make the sounds that are closest to what your voice makes, it's generally the healthiest way to be. If you try to shape the way that your voice sounds to match something else, you're causing the mechanism to do things that it doesn't naturally want to do. And that tends to lead to things like tension or even long-term damage and if done in certain ways. So I don't demonstrate because I don't want any of you to emulate me in the same way that I would not want to emulate any of you. I've, it's one of the first lessons I ever learned as a singer. Don't emulate the people around you. Search for your own voice and make that the most important thing. So that's why I don't demonstrate a whole lot. Next question, why do you cut the audio clips so short when you analyze? Hopefully this won't last forever, but until I get to the point to where I can make licensing deals with some of these copyright holders, if I put more than 10 to 15 seconds of audio in a clip, I get copyright strikes. Last time I did this, my video was blocked in every country except North Korea. So because of that, I've just said, all right, I'm just going to cut these clips short and I'm just going to skip to these teachable moments and I'm just going to analyze those. And I know that that affects the ability to really get into the song and groove and enjoy it. I understand that. You have to look at my videos as more of a technical analysis rather than the purpose of the videos being to enjoy the song because that's not really what I'm trying to do anyway. The next question. It seems like you're just trying to limit what people do with their voices. I like using this unhealthy technique, harsh vocals, whatever. That doesn't make me a bad singer, you know. Answer, you are absolutely correct. That does not make you a bad singer. My goal is not to take away from one's individual artistry. My goal is not to say that you can't do harsh vocals. My goal is to instill a knowledge into my viewers of the things that are healthy and the things that aren't healthy. One of the biggest things that I always use as an analogy, if you've ever seen the movie Pulp Fiction, there's a part where Bruce Willis is being talked to by Ving Rhames and uh, uh, Ving Rhames' character is telling Bruce Willis to throw the fight and he keeps asking him, how many fights do you have left in you, Butch? And so the implication is that like you should throw this fight, get some money and get out because you might not have a whole lot left. I kind of take the same approach to people who do unhealthy things. I want you to always be mindful of how many more times can I do this before I have vocal problems. If And I believe that if you have a safe, fundamental baseline of good, healthy, sustainable technique, then you're, you're good to experiment however you want. As long as you know ways to keep those unhealthy techniques from becoming habits, do all the unhealthy things that you want. 
I in no way say don't do harsh vocals. What I do say is don't listen to the people who try to tell you what you want to hear and say that there are no long-term ramifications of using screaming and harsh vocals because that's simply not true. And if it is true, there is no longitudinal study to back that claim up at this point. My views will adapt as that study is released. The day that study comes out is the day I'm changing. And I've read a bunch of them and none of them have shown anything conclusive other than we understand how the sound is made, and it's not false full manipulation, by the way. We know how the sound is made, but we don't know how sustainable it is. And that's the extent of where we are right now with it. As the science adapts and evolves, so will my viewpoints. And the final question, your channel will, well, it's more of a statement than a question. Your channel will be so much bigger if you just cut your video shorter and you analyze more musicians that lots of people are into. Sure, but I'm not creating this channel to be the next million subscriber YouTube channel. That, that's not my goal. My goal here is to have consistent, truthful, scientifically sound information available on YouTube so that singers will at least have something that they can rely on as being reasonably accurate because there's a lot of fluff and a lot of junk out there on YouTube. I, I want my content to stand on its own two feet. I would like for the quality of what I have to say and the information that I give to be enough to convince my viewers that, you know, this guy is legitimate. He knows what he's talking about and these things that he says make sense. And if that means that I don't have a million subscribers because I'm not willing to just say, oh yeah, you can make that sound. Everybody can sound like Adele. Everyone can sound like Dave Mustaine. Everybody can sound like James Hetfield. I'm not going to say that. And if that means that I never get past 5,000 subscribers because of it, that's okay with me because my integrity is more important and education is very important to me. So that's all the biggest questions that I usually get. And I hope that all of you kind of take something from that and you understand where I'm coming from. And I hope that these little guidelines help you to appreciate the content that I offer as well. If you have any questions, please feel free to bring them to me. I love talking about the stuff. I'm a big nerd um, outside of playing video games, having a girlfriend and uh, playing Magic the Gathering and chess. I don't really do anything other than vocal stuff. So like that's the extent of my life. So please feel free to ask me questions. I love it. This is what I'm on earth to do, I believe. So that's why I'm here. Anyway, thank you for watching and I hope that you enjoy my content. Take care.